companies. Um, a lot of you will probably be familiar with companies uh, and you may operate under a company, uh, a trading company yourself in, in a farming business or other type of business. Um, it's quite interesting to see in the poll that there was quite a, a significant percentage of the catchment groups that look to be operating under the company structure, which is probably not the preferred structure if we were starting from scratch, although there's no reason why it can't be used for a catchment group. Um, it, it's certainly, um, uh, you know, an option. Um, so the com a company is governed, there's an act, the Companies Act, which has a whole set of rules around how companies are set up and operated. And of course, there's a lot of judge-made law or case law or common law is what we call it around the operation of companies. Um, normally, the company will have a constitution, which is the, the document that founds it. Uh, it doesn't have to have a constitution which is registered with the company's office. So these um, incorporated structures, so that's the incorporated society, the charitable trust board and a company are all registered through the New Zealand Companies Act, it's company's office. Um, uh, so, and there, there are other types of incorporated um, structures that, that can be registered with the company's office as well. Um, so companies, as, as a lot of you probably realise, they are governed by directors. Uh, just going back to the constitution, if the company doesn't register a constitution with the company's office, then it's, it's just governed by the Companies Act. So it doesn't have to register a comp constitution. Uh, but with your catchment groups, if you are using the structure <clears throat> for your catchment group, you probably do want to have a constitution which can adapt uh, the operation to the type of um, organisation that you have and its purposes and, and what, it, what it wants to do. So you'll have directors and then your members will be your shareholders and there can be any number of uh, directors or shareholders. Um, you, the funding can be by way of subscriptions. Um, the shareholders can advance money to the company to be used for the company's purposes. And also you can, um, the company may be able to obtain uh, donations, grants and bequests. Um, one big advantage of the company is the limited liability. Uh, and again, that what that means is the directors are not individually personally liable and nor are the shareholders. Uh, the company itself is, is the entity that's sued. If, um, if someone has an issue with it, uh, of course, directors can be personally liable if they don't comply with their duties under the Companies Act. And, and there's quite a few uh, duties that the companies need, company directors need to comply with. Uh, and just to give an example, uh, if a company director keeps trading when the company becomes insolvent, uh, then that company director can incur a personal liability. So company directors need to be aware of those duties to avoid any personal liability. Um, as with the incorporated charitable trust and the incorporated society, uh, it's the company itself that will own the assets, not the individuals. Uh, now, benefits, the limited liability, of course, the directors will be in charge of running the company. Um, they will be making the decisions and they will be doing that in accordance with their registered constitution if there is one, or otherwise in accordance with the Companies Act, and uh, they are accountable to the shareholders. So um, if they're not doing the job properly, the shareholders can take action against them. Uh, and um, the, whole, the whole governance of the, the company is it's run by the directors. Uh, they're accountable to the shareholders. <clears throat> 